Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am broadcasting this lesson to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe along the Danube River. Today, we are starting with the reading section. This class is for members. It's a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch and learn. The materials, as usual, come from our websites, aehelp.com for the academic version of the test. And if you are learning for general IELTS, which is usually for immigration purposes, please visit us at gielteshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots of goodies for you to improve your band scores, and you will see some of that in today's lesson. Hi, Kesey. Hi, Begzod. Good to see members joining in on time. How are you doing today, Kesey? How are you doing today, Begzod? I hope your weekend is going fantastic so far. Hi, your Salem. Hi, Alexander. Good to see you in class. Darken the screen a little bit here. Hi, Rahul. Good to hear, Begzad. I'm happy that you're doing fantastic. Uh, Alexander, I did get your uh, email. I haven't had time to set up your perks yet, but I will do that later today. So look forward to that. Uh, I'm doing really well. Thank you, Begzad, for asking. All right, viewers, uh, to join our premium online courses, you can use the code LIVE20 for a 20% discount. If you have questions about our products or about the exam, don't be shy. Send us an email. We can help you out. Uh, my name, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. That's Adrian at aehelp.com. Hi, Preeti. Okay, so uh, again, right now, we're focusing on reading. And then in 90 minutes, we will have another class where everybody can join in. And that will be an original task to essay uh, question. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, all right, students. So uh, the reading that we're looking at today, it is um, reading passage three. Obviously, as you can see up here, reading passage three. This is coming out of your second exam book, test number five. So Members, uh, you should have access to all of these exams, and I'm going to show you how to use these materials effectively when you're studying at home. Hi, Shang Tung Tsai. Still working on remembering your name. I hope that was a little bit better pronunciation this time. Okay, so for this reading passage, uh, we have a list of headings question. We will look at that. We will go through the reading passage and answer together. Uh, the reading passage is about uh, mirages. Okay, uh, Everybody knows what a mirage is, or maybe I should ask that as an open question. Uh, what is a mirage? So what is a mirage? Uh, the picture will help you. In the real exam, you do have pictures for some of the reading passages. The pictures are there to help you understand the topic as well to help you visualize and predict, think about the topic. So always take a few seconds to look at the picture carefully and then imagine what the passage will be discussing. Uh, Alexander says, you see a lake in the desert. Yeah, Alexander, that's right. A mirage uh, is when you see... Uh, an image, uh, perhaps uh, in the desert, uh, which is not actually there. And in most cases, of course, Alexander, uh, it is uh, water that we believe that we're seeing water, right? Uh, Begzad, Rahul, you're right. It's a type of illusion. Uh, illusion is a very good word to describe uh, mirage. So good for you, okay? So uh, here we have our reading. Uh, we will read in just a few moments. And uh, then we have some questions coming after. This is a sentence completion type question. Uh, we can absolutely review this question because this information is contained in the passage. It's found in the passage. Uh, so let's just read this together. Um, read with me nice and loud, okay? So when I'm reading, 
I'm not just reading for you, but I'm reading uh, with you together, okay? So read with me, members and viewers. Uh, so choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer. Write your answers in boxes 32 to 36 on your answer sheet. Uh, mirages are created by that fool the mind. Differences in air are the cause of mirages. The pool of water seen in the distance is a of the sky. We interpret the mirage as water and not a mirror because the mind makes an from its past experiences. Okay, good. Now, the next question is a classification type question. This is another type of question in the reading passages where you have to classify or categorize information. So here, it's either a mirage or a hallucination, okay? Obviously, a mirage then is not the same as a hallucination. That's why, Begzad and Rahul, illusion is a better word for mirage than hallucination, okay? Well, look at that. Now, uh, classification questions, again, uh, as many members now know, these are in the passage, so you can read these. Uh, they are fictitious. Again, nice and loud, read with me. They are fictitious. They can be caught on camera. They are a product of the mind interpreting unfamiliar and contradictory phenomenon. Okay, all right. And then we have some more questions. And again, students, skimming and scanning for answers is not the best strategy, especially in the academic version of the test, especially in passage three. There's too much paraphrasing. There's too many question types. It's very difficult to try to uh, search for answers without reading uh, when you have four types of questions like this, especially for multiple choice. So here we have multiple choice questions. Uh, should we read these multiple choice questions and answers, uh, students? So we read the last two. Uh, we know we have a list of headings in the beginning there. Uh, now we have this multiple choice. Uh, should I read all of these? Begzod says yes, but only the questions, not the answer choices. Uh, and you're right, Begzod. I hope uh, everybody else who has seen these classes before is thinking the same. The reason is because here you have four choices. Uh, only one of these pieces of information is in the passage. The other three pieces of information are not in the passage. Because the human brain is not linear in its thinking, uh, it's confusing to read extra or false information before the passage. So just the question, you're right, Begzod, just the question. Why? Because the question is clearly somewhere in the passage. It's answered by the passage. So let's read that. Uh, why do we see the image on the road as a puddle of water? Good, and then we skip the choices. And the last one here, why can't a person unsee a mirage? Okay, great. So let's go back uh, and let's work through this. My goal today, members, is to go through this reading passage with you and... Um, answer the questions. Most importantly, my primary goal for today is to show you how to use these exams that you have access to in your My Student account, okay? So this is the kind of practice you need to do before you sit your official IELTS exam. That's right, we skip the choices. It's, okay, so um, let's tackle the list of, head, uh, list of headings questions first. So what's the strategy? And I know some members know uh, a couple of good strategies for uh, this type of question. So what is the correct strategy for list of headings? What do you have to keep in mind? Uh, how should you approach them? How should you practice for them at home? Give me some answers. I want to make sure uh, that you're uh, keeping up with these. Okay, good. So Kesey says, uh, well, paraphrase. And uh, what Kesey is saying is that you should paraphrase the choices. OK, 
okay, as much as possible. Why is that, Kesey? Why should, uh, at home, why should I practice paraphrasing these choices? Paraphrasing the choices means to say them in your words or say them with different words or expressions. And uh, Bagzad, I see that you agree here. Uh, Preeti, you're on the right track also. That's going to be the next step. Uh, we will get to that, certainly. Uh, so why should I paraphrase these choices? What's the logic of practicing that? I might as well um, do that. So how the brain processes mirages, I'll start with that one. Uh, how the mind, or even more paraphrased, the way, the way the mind interprets uh, mirages or illusions, right? If you want to paraphrase. So the way the mind interprets mirages is another way to say how the brain processes mirages. Why am I doing that? So Begzad says, well, that way you know that you understand that choice. You're right, Begzad. So it's uh, learning the vocabulary. It's making sure I understand the selection, the possible selection. What's the other reason? Kesey says to understand the paragraph. Yes, in some way you're right, Kesey. Uh, anybody else? What is the logic of paraphrasing these? A common experience of a mirage, um, a frequent occurrence of mirages, right? So frequent occurrence of mirages or frequent interpretation of mirages, something close uh, to that. Filmable, but ultimately up to the mind, can be caught on camera, but at the end or in the end, uh, it's the brain. Okay, I'm not going to do it for all because I want to move along. But again, at home, you should take 10, 15 minutes to do this. Uh, Preeti, yeah, it, it, it helps to understand the passage. But even more importantly, members, the reason why I'm paraphrasing these at home is because I'm training my mind to see that information in different ways when I'm reading. Okay, And uh, in the IELTS exam, you will rarely see the exact same words in the correct paragraph. In most situations, and this is the, this is the possibly the most important reason to paraphrase, uh, because uh, the paragraphs will also be paraphrased uh, from these choices. So it's very rare that you actually see these exact same words, okay? You're going to see synonyms and expressions in the paragraph, okay? Uh, Kisi, absolutely, that's true. So paraphrasing helps your active thinking, uh, no doubt about it, and that's why it's something you should practice all the time anyway. Okay, good. Uh, and a couple of members said, well, then you should answer these questions as you read. Absolutely. Uh, please notice that list of headings questions are the only type of questions that are given to you before the passage. The reason for that is because the examiners believe that this type of question is best to answer while you are reading, okay? Questions like true, false, not given, multiple choice, uh, classification, they all come after the passage because the examiners believe that high-level students, band seven students, band eight students, should answer those questions after the passage, and that is the best strategy, okay? Uh, the only one, again, that's before is list of headings. So these you answer before the passage. Um, there's one other really important idea to keep in mind when you're doing these. Uh, Yvonne, absolutely paraphrasing will help in every part of the exam. Uh, so what else should I remember when I see these questions? What is kind of, so there should be a light that goes bing in my head, <laughs> that uh, classic or iconic light bulb 
uh, going off uh, when you have the right idea or a good idea. Uh, what is that? So when you're looking at these list of headings questions, what is that key idea that I have to immediately think of actively, KC, as you're mentioning about active thinking? So it should be in my head as soon as I come across this question. And by the way, students, uh, basically every single academic IE LTS exam will have at least one list of headings question uh, in the reading passages. Sometimes there will be two, okay? So sometimes two passages will have this type of question. So it's, uh, you can see here that you have, um, one is given, so you have three, uh, seven, ten. So you have ten answers here. So ten of your forty in this uh, reading section are list of headings. You can have even more. So it's up to twelve or even fourteen answers could be list of headings. Okay. So what's that light bulb? Let's not forget about that. So what's the light bulb? What's the idea that you have to think about? Just guess. If you don't know, don't don't be shy. If you're wrong, that's okay. We learn from mistakes. So what is it? And I'll make a quick note about that for some of our newer members. It's where one of the most common places where people make mistakes with these. So remember that list of headings questions answer the what question, meaning what is the paragraph about? And you have to keep in mind that it's not the why, so it's not explanations, and it's not the details, so it's not the how, okay? A very common mistake uh, with this is that students will choose a why or a how. You'll see that in a minute, okay? So, uh, yes, Begzod, you're right. Absolutely, list of headings answer the what question, what the paragraph is about, and you're right, Begzod, another way to say that is it's the topic. for each paragraph. Okay, fantastic. Um, so uh, let's start the reading. Let's do it together. Now, members, um, you have a very useful tool and we are maybe the only company in the world for the IELTS exam that has this extra tool for the reading section. What that is is actual audio uh, play along or read along uh, with the reading passages. So when you log in at the top here into your My Student account, then you have, uh, and as a member, you have access to all of the audio. Uh, you have these audio CDs here. So open up your audio CDs, and this is going to be uh, CD5. Uh, track number seven. I strongly, strongly suggest using the audio reading to help you build fluency, clear pronunciation, and comprehension when you're studying this at home, okay? So um, let's just jump back to the audio for this. I'm going to play the audio a little bit, uh, and I'll go back to the reading, and then I will ask you what the paragraph is about. So uh, listen carefully. Uh, I have max volume on my side, so if it's a bit quiet, turn it up on your end. Uh, and again, you're focusing for what is the paragraph about, okay? So you're focusing on the topic, on the what uh, question. Uh, here we go. Mirages. A man is walking in a desert in dire need of water. Up ahead, he sees what seems to be a lake or a pond. Excited, he runs towards the source of water. He gets closer, but the water disappears. He looks again, and the water reappears, but it is in the distance once again. He runs once more, but his efforts are futile. The water is not there. Okay, that was a bit quick. I'll play that one more time. Again, focus on what is this paragraph about. So listen to the reader, read as well, and focus on what the paragraph is about. I'm going to jump back to the beginning here.
Mirages. A man is walking in a desert in dire need of water. Up ahead, he sees what seems to be a lake or a pond. Excited, he runs towards the source of water. He gets closer, but the water disappears. He looks again, and the water reappears, but it is in the distance once again. He runs once more, but his efforts are futile. The water is not there. The man is not... All right. So students, what is this paragraph about? So this first paragraph, when you're answering these list of headings questions, ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? Hi, Mariko. Welcome to join in. So Yvonne says it's a story about a stranger in the desert. Uh, Begzlet says it's a story about a person who sees an illusion or who sees a mirage. Uh, Kisi says it's a man's experience in the desert. Very good. Okay, Begzod, um, Rahul, uh, Kisi, those are some good answers. Okay, that's clearly what it's about. So again, at home, you need to do this with pencil and paper during the official exam. You do not have time for that. So you just ask and answer in your mind. So in your mind, you're thinking, what is this paragraph about? give a full sentence answer. So the question is, what is this or what is paragraph A about? And then you answer it always in full sentences in your mind. This is about a man's experience of a mirage in the desert. Yeah, that's absolutely what it is. Now, uh, when you have that answer, so when you've clearly identified it and you need to practice having the best answer possible, then you choose the closest match. So let's go back to the list of headings. Okay, here they are. And uh, let's see which one of these matches closest with a man's experience of a mirage in the desert. So windows, mirrors, and hallucinations. No, that's very far from what I'm thinking. How the brain processes, uh, not so much. Temperature gradients, filmable, but ultimately up to the mind. There's nothing about filming. A common experience of a mirage. Mm, experience seems okay, but common experience, I'm not sure. Uh, the need for water, we don't know that. The paragraph doesn't say the man's thirsty. Uh, it just says he sees water, right? So don't put information in which is not there. Uh, the uh, cause of mirages, it doesn't seem like it's explained. True hallucinations. This one, because we read the questions, we should realize that this is not a mirage. So it's something different. An adventurer sees something. The difference between two phenomena, a fallible human mind. Okay, we don't have too much information about these. So the best possible answer that we're seeing so far is an adventurer sees something. Now, why do I have confidence in that answer? So now you're picking number nine, which is good. Uh, one reason that uh, th I have confidence in this answer is because of the subject. So you know that in English and in communication, you have subject, verb, object, right? The subject in this case is the man, okay? And in our answer, what is it about? It's about the man. Another way to say this man is the adventurer. That gives me a lot of confidence that number nine is the correct answer, okay? So you have to be very cautious, all right? Uh, the human uh, mind likes to add information on its own, and that can often lead to the wrong choice in list of headings. In list of headings, you have to think about it like a robot. Never include extra information from your own ideas. Just use what you see, okay? Again, there's nothing there about the man needing water, okay? just says he sees water. So I choose number nine and then I move on, okay? So paragraph A, 
in my answer sheet, I put the Roman numeral 9ix, and then I go to the next one. Now, notice how the next one, we're given this example, uh, and it tells us that the answer here is x. When you're practicing at home, don't jump over the example paragraph. Make sure to read it. That will give you confidence in your strategy, okay? All right. So um, let's go back to the reading, okay? And again, uh, it's good to use the audio at home. So I'm going to use the audio a little bit more, and then I'll switch to in-person reading. So just give me one moment here. Um, all right, here we go. Keep listening. And at home, make sure to use this audio, okay? Going mad. In fact, there is nothing wrong with him or his vision at all. What he has seen is called a mirage. Mirages are optical illusions caused by atmospheric conditions which play tricks on the brain's visual system. Importantly, they are not hallucinations. Hallucinations are fabrications, while mirages are a result of phenomena in the real world. Another way to look at the difference between hallucinations and mirages is that mirages will be seen by any observer. Hallucinations, conversely, exist only in the mind of the person hallucinating. Okay, so what is this paragraph about? What is B about? In your own words. And I know it's given, so we'll see what the choice is. But in your own words, what is this paragraph about? Doing the example like this will really help you to gain confidence in your technique. Okay? Uh, Amrit says uh, it's a debate. Uh, be more specific, Amrit. So you have a good approach, but what do you mean, a debate? Make it a little bit darker for you. Let's see it. Uh, your solemn, yes, that's kind of half of it. What is a mirage? Uh, Kisi, that would be my answer. So that would be closer to what I would say. It's the difference between a mirage and a hallucination. Um, that's right, uh, Sheng uh, Tone. Uh, it is uh, the difference between a mirage and hallucination. Pretty good. Yeah, uh, Yvonne, exactly. So uh, when you have multiple students... Uh, coming up with a very similar answer, that gives you a good idea that you have an accurate response to that what question. So let's take a look at the choices. Now here, uh, we know the answer is X, so we just look at the correct answer uh, because it's given. It says the difference between two phenomenon. So uh, of course, one phenomena is the mirage. The other phenomena is the uh, hallucination. So uh, those are your two phenomena. So notice it's a very uh, close paraphrase. In fact, the first part here is exactly what many of you wrote. So now you have confidence. Now you can think, okay, now I'm confident in my technique. I know what I'm doing, all right? If you get the example wrong, if it's absolutely different than what you're thinking, you need to stop and consider why, why that happened, all right? So clearly X is the correct answer that's given for us. We have confidence and we can move on. Okay, for the remainder of the passage, we'll read together, okay? Um, but again, members, viewers, especially those who have access to all of our materials, Make sure to use the reading audio. We put a lot of extra effort in to bring you audio for the reading sections. So use them, okay? Use them. Use the audio files for the reading sections. All right. Uh, let's uh, read together paragraph C. And when you're practicing at home, practice reading aloud. Why aloud? Because aloud reading gives you what's called multiple sensory integration. That means that you're using the muscles of your mouth, you're using your ears to hear yourself, 
you're using your eyes to take note of the words and the information. So it's called multiple sensory integration. It's much more effective in learning once you do it uh, a bit than just reading silently. Okay, and in fact, it will aid the comprehension of your silent reading as well. So read aloud. Okay, here we go, students. So let's read together. Uh, while the man walking in the desert anecdote is a popular uh, mirage narrative, the most common mirage in everyday life actually takes place on long straight, flat highways on sunny days. Driving along such a highway on such a day, it is, a it is common to see what looks like a puddle of water on the road in the distance. But once that point is reached, the puddle is gone. And is instead located further in the distance. What is going on here? All right, uh, what is this paragraph about? What is paragraph C about? So we just read that um, although we think about the uh, water in the desert, it's a common narrative. We frequently uh, see it in stories and movies. The most common experience of mirages is when people are driving on a road and we see a puddle on the road in the distance, then it disappears when we get there, and we see more. Amrit, no, again, don't add uh, your own ideas, Amrit. Just stick to what you read. So what are you reading about here? What is this paragraph about? Okay, and again, remember, at home, on paper, okay, or in a document. So question, what is body paragraph? see about answer uh, your salam says it's where mirages occur yet you almost have the full answer your salam so this paragraph or paragraph c is about where mirages occur uh, yes, um, you're right, uh, Sheng Tun. Um, it's an example of where we see mirages on the road, but even more importantly, it's what? The most, what example of mirages? The most something example of actual mirages for humans. Pay attention to that word. That's right, Alexander. That's right, Marwa. Marwa, good to see you in class. Yeah, it's the most common. So paragraph C is about where mirages occur most frequently for people, right? Which is on the road, in the distance, right? So that's what it's about in daily life. Yeah, Rahul, exactly. That's another way to say it. Mirages in daily life. So if you said that, Rahul, you'd be on the right track as well. Sure, that's what it's about. Uh, now we can look at it. So this is why you have to really focus on getting that specific answer. Okay. Uh, so which one matches, students? I'm not going to read them all again. Uh, I know you're able to read them. If it's too bright, let me know. If uh, you want it to be brighter, let me know. Okay. So... Marwa says, well, it's got to be number five, twice over. Amrit says, yeah, number five looks the best. Preeti agrees. Kisi, everybody's in agreement? Yeah, absolutely. Yvonne, uh, Yvonne uh, make sure that when you do the actual IELTS exam, use the Roman numeral for this, okay? Don't use same begzod. Don't use the uh, Arabic numeral. Use the Roman numeral. Um, yeah, so number five a common experience of a mirage, which is what? Uh, it is seeing a puddle on a road, seeing a puddle of water on the road on a hot day. Uh, 
just for some review for some students, I know for some members who are newer, this will be a little bit fresh. Uh, what type of paraphrasing is this? So what kind of paraphrasing is happening here between the paragraph and between the correct choice? So seeing a puddle of water on the road on a hot day is what's being paraphrased by a common experience of a mirage. So that's totally okay, Amri. You'll catch up. No problem. So what, what kind of paraphrasing is the IELTS exam maker using to test your English and your thinking here? That's right, Begzod. Very good. Yeah, it's called descriptive paraphrasing, right? So this is an example of what's called descriptive paraphrasing. Okay, if you're a new member uh, and you aren't familiar with the different types of paraphrasing, uh, they are synonym, antonym negative, expressions, grammar, and descriptive. This is descriptive. We basically describe this situation. Right? So very good, pretty good. It's descriptive, okay? Uh, make sure to identify the type of paraphrasing so that you can catch it quickly when you're in the actual test, okay? Also knowing that it's descriptive paraphrasing helps you to find this answer faster and be more confident with it, okay? All right, uh, so then uh, for A we have nine, right? For uh, C, we have five. So that's how you put it into your answer sheet. Um, yeah, so the time is enough. Marwa, the time is enough. If you practice this at home, and uh, many students who I taught face-to-face -face, uh, in the past, uh, when we sat down and when they really got the idea of what they're doing, Marwa, uh, they were able to do this very quickly very, very quickly. So uh, to be uh, clear, Marwa, or quantitative, a student who practices this technique accurately a few times can read the whole passage and answer all of the list of headings questions in roughly 12 to 13 minutes, which leaves them another seven to eight minutes for the other questions. And by having the correct answers for the list of headings, the other questions go a lot faster. Okay, so it actually uh, buys you time or buys you speed for the other questions. Try it, Marwa. And Marwa, your English is quite good, so I'm, I know for sure that for you this would work very efficiently if you practice it. Okay, and it's true reading comprehension. All right, uh, let's go to paragraph D. Here we go. Um, Marwa, let's, uh, let's have fun with it. Um, for paragraph uh, D and E, let's do it with speed. I'll show it to you, okay? So I'll uh, put my money where my mouth is, as the expression goes. <laughs> All right, uh, Marwa, always challenge me. If you think something's not clear, challenge me. Challenging a teacher is good, okay? Teachers should welcome their students' challenges, so. All right, here we go. So we're gonna do this a little bit better paced. Um, read with me. The cause of mirages is the difference in heat between the ground and the air. Tarmac, the surface material of highways, can get very hot in the summer and release heat, raising the temperature of the air immediately above the tarmac. The air higher up is much cooler, so there is a sharp temperature gradient or rate of change in the air above the highway. It is known from physics that light is refracted or bent differently through air at different temperatures. The sharp temperature gradient in the air immediately above the highway causes the light rays to bend upwards towards the cooler, denser air. Because the human visual system interprets all light rays as being straight, which in general is true, we interpret these bent rays as originating from the ground. What is seen on the road in the distance is simply a reflection of the sky on the ground, which from afar looks precisely like a puddle of water in the middle of the road. What is this paragraph about? 
it is about the, you're right, you're solemn, the causes of mirages, right? Uh, you're solemn, how a mirage forms. Marwa, how a mirage occurs. That's right. Remember, topic sentence often will have the answer, the cause of mirages. Look at that, okay? So I go back to my choices and I'm looking for that match. By this time, I've, I've looked through these a few times. So I know very quickly that there it is, the cause of mirages. Okay, so I have a very quick answer there. And I pick Roman numeral seven and I go on. So I put seven directly into my uh, answer sheet and I move on. Okay, so Marwa, that's how quick it should be. When you practice it, that's how fast it should be. That only took me maybe two minutes, okay? And that's probably the longest paragraph in the passage. So then I go to E. Let's keep going. That humans see the phenomenon as a puddle of water is not a coincidence, however. It is the result of a rapid problem-solving process in the brain which attempts to make sense of conflicting phenomena. Since humans are not accustomed to seeing non-straight light rays, the brain must make sense of them as best it can. Water on the highway is not the only explanation for what the mind sees ahead. A window pane or a mirror may be on the road instead. If there was a large mirror on the road, for example, the visual phenomenon would be identical. The driver would see a reflection of the sky on the road in the distance. So why is it that we always interpret the mirage as water on the road and not a mirror in the road or something else? It is because the brain without consciously thinking, makes the best inference it can. The average person in their catalog of experiences does not have a real non-mirage experience of seeing a mirror in the middle of the highway. Conversely, the average person does have a real experience of seeing a puddle on the highway. Any sufficiently rainy day will produce this effect. The brain compares the probabilities of these two and other possibilities and concludes that the phenomenon must be a puddle of water. Knowing that the water is not in fact there does nothing to dispel us from the visual impression that water is on the highway. The brain's visual machinery is not subject to the logic of the rest of the brain. No matter how hard a person tries to unsee the mirage, it will always be there. Okay, that's the longest paragraph. What is it about? Nice and quick, students. What is this paragraph about? You should have a fairly quick, simple answer for this for me. What is it about? In your own words. Your Salam says it's the human's brain's interpretation of a mirage. Kesey said it's how the brain processes the mirage. Um, yeah, exactly. How the mirage works in your brain. Um, Shang Tun. I'll remember that. Shang Tun. Am I pronouncing that cor correctly, Shang Tun? And should I say Tun or should I just say Shang? Let me know. I don't want to insult you. So, um, All right. Uh, but you're right. Okay. So those are the right answers. Uh, and uh, if I look at my choices, windows, mirrors, and hallucinations. Okay, there was something about windows and mirrors, but those are details. Remember, this is about what? How the brain processes mirages. Well, it looks pretty close to what a few of you have said. Uh, temperature gradients and so on. At this point, I'm gonna be very confident. Yeah, you're right, you're solemn. I'm gonna go with number Two. Okay. How is my speed, everyone? Are you able to stay with me at this speed, members? So I would choose number two. Hung. Okay. Hung. Thank you for that. That makes it a little bit easier for me. Thank you. Okay.
Uh, Preeti, how the brain's confused about mirages? It's still going to be the closest match to the correct answer, which is how the brain processes mirages. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have one paragraph left. It's the conclusion. We go to the conclusion, read it, same step. Uh, conclusion can be a little bit trickier. You need to understand the whole paragraph. It's nice and short. Thank you for the feedback, Begzod. Uh, Yvonne, you will have at least one list of headings question in the academic IELTS. You can have it in the general. And in the academic, you often will have two list of headings questions in the passages. So here we go. Paragraph F. Read with me nice and loud. Interestingly, mirages can actually be captured on film because the refracted light rays really are forming an image on the road. What the false image is mistaken for, however, is entirely up to the interpretation of the human mind. Uh, what is paragraph F about? Okay. So what is paragraph F about? Give me an answer as fast as you can. I know we have a little bit of lag online here, so it takes a little bit for you to hear me. Uh, Amri, again, careful not to add your own um, twist on it. You're close, but it's, a, it's not as accurate as can be. Uh, Kesey says, mirages can be caught on film. Yeah, and the human mind decides what it is, right? Yeah, Amrit, so stick with what the paragraph is saying. So the paragraph says that you can catch a mirage on film and the human mind figures out what it is, okay? Different imaginations, not so much. Most of us see water, Amrit, so that's kind of your interpretation of that paragraph. Uh, yeah, that's right, Hung. The mirages can be caught, caught, past tense, Hung, caught on film, right? Uh, so... What do we have? Uh, windows know how the brain used it. Temperature gradients, filmable, but ultimately up to the mind. I'd say that's pretty darn close to uh, what we're talking about here. So number four, filmable, but up to the mind. Yeah, Amrit, good. Okay. So uh, Yvonne, you're with us. You're able to uh, keep up. Um, Marwa, does that make sense of how quickly we can actually get those answers when we really practice this strategy? And not just what I think happens with a lot of students is they're not confident in list of headings answers, but with this strategy, they're much more confident. So students can say for 99% that they have the right answer. With skimming and scanning strategies, it drops to 60, 70%. That's too low, okay? It's too low. So, yeah, the correct answer is uh, number four. Yeah. So, again, on your answer sheet, number four, and there you go. Sorry, I have a little bit changing light factor here, but I don't want to close the window, so I'll just adjust the light. Um, all right, good. So, now we have those answers, and by getting the correct answer, answer for the list of headings, we can be a lot more confident uh, with the next questions, okay? You'll know where the information is. You'll know where to search if you have to, okay? The trick students to get those really high band scores in the exam, like band eight in the reading or band nine, uh, is to think about it like the tortoise, slow and steady wins the race, okay? Slow and steady wins the race. All right, here we go. So um, write your answer in boxes 32 to 35 on your answer sheet. Number 32, mirages are created by something that fool the mind, okay? So mirages are created by something that fool the mind, uh, and it's no more than two words, okay? That's right, Hung. Slow and steady wins the race as the story of the tortoises and the hare teaches us. So this might be a little bit difficult to uh, answer without looking back at the passage. 
if I have to search for this answer, where should I look? What part of the passage should I look in to answer this question? Okay, and this is where you're really going to love the strategy for list of headings. Hint, hint. Yeah, shouldn't be a question mark, Bagzad. You should say that with a period. Okay, how mirages occur or uh, what was the actual list of headings answer? Anybody remember? What was the actual answer for that paragraph? No. Mirage occurs, Rahul. So what's another way to say that? Begzad says B or C. Uh, if we go back to our list of headings, so you have two, I mean, you can say how the brain processes mirages, maybe, right? But my first intuition tells me that the best place to search for this, if I have to search for these words, is the cause of mirages. Okay, remember that one of the paragraphs had this answer, the cause of mirages. Now, you're going to see that on your paper because you have it in your uh, answer sheet, and you realize that that's in paragraph C, okay? So the cause of mirages. Why the cause of mirages? Because that's just another way of saying mirages are created by. Okay, so really rely on your logic, okay, on your ability for logic, all right? Uh, and of course, that's why the academic exam is testing you for this, because this is an extremely important skill for university, especially if you're going for master's and PhD study. So I'm going to go back to paragraph C. I'm going to use, okay, well, how does uh, this happen? So then I'm looking for this idea of, uh, let me show you the question one more time. Mirages cr are created by something. It's a noun that fool the mind. So I'm looking for that in paragraph C. Okay. So here, while the man walking in the anecdote is popular, Uh, narrative. The most common mirage uh, in life actually takes a, a straight sunny days driving along a highway. On such a day, it is common to see. Um, oops, sorry, that's not the right paragraph, I think. Oh, here, sorry, D. <laughs> My bad, uh, I jumped the example. So D, the cause of mirage is the difference in heat between the ground and the air. Uh, the tarmac the surface material of highways can get very hot. So I'm looking in paragraph D for what is the noun that fools the human mind, okay? So what is, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm reading Begzod, you got me. Yeah, it's D. Um, so uh, the air higher up is much cooler. So there's a sharp temperature gradient or rate of change in the air above the highway. It is known from physics that light is refracted or bent differently through the air at different temperatures. The sharp temperature gradient in the air immediately above the highway causes light, ways, light rays to bend upwards towards the cooler, denser air. Because the human visual system interprets all light rays as being straight, which in general is true, we interpret these bent rays as originating from the ground, okay? So what is it that actually um, tricks the human mind? Yes, Amrit, flashbacks from grade nine. <laughs> okay. Um, it 
is the correct answer here is still waiting for it students what is it what creates or what is it that fools the human mind it's not the reflection the correct answer here is atmospheric conditions okay so the right answer is atmospheric conditions mirages are created by atmospheric conditions that fool the mind it's not temperature your solemn it's atmospheric conditions it's the difference in temperatures now this is quite a tricky question okay so at this point you should be going oh that's difficult where did i even read that where did you get that is the question you should be asking okay that's the question i'm asking and this could be for a band eight or band nine not to worry amrit says is it in the paragraph no it might not be so then what i want to do how can i what should i do yeah hung you're right i can't but there's no such word in the text you're right yvonne so what should i do then if i know that's the correct answer from the answer sheet what should i do again remember what i said the primary goal of this class is to teach you how to use the materials so this is kind of a trick question i'm challenging you're thinking. Um, so what should I do at this point? So I got this answer wrong. I put in the word temperature or reflection. What should I do? Anybody? Especially students who have our books and have had them for a few weeks or a few months. What should I do? Uh, Blundina, um, it's awesome to have you as a member. Send me an email so I can hook you up with these exam books, okay? Um, nope. So what I should do is go to the transcripts. Remember in the listening yesterday, some of you who are here, we looked at the transcripts. We also have transcripts for the reading. So in this case, the transcripts are on page, uh, 147 for this test. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to look at the transcripts. And this was, I think, like question 30 something. I'll find it in a second. Okay. All right. Uh, so when you look in the back of your exam book, okay, when you look in the back of your exam book, um, you will find the transcripts for the reading passages. Okay, and in the transcripts, uh, you will see that they give you where the answers are located. So here you see number 32. Is that clear? Can everybody see it clearly? Um, and then you can see mirrors are optical illusions caused by atmospheric conditions which play tricks on the brain's visual system. So I skipped paragraph B. And that's the danger of having that example. So the answer wasn't in C or D. It was actually in paragraph B. Okay. So I have to think, okay, what did I do wrong here? What was my mistake? Right? Why didn't I get this correctly? Why didn't I find this piece of information? Mirages are optical illusions caused by atmospheric conditions which play tricks on the visual system. Why wasn't I able to find that? Okay. Anybody? What do you think? Why, why didn't I find that? Why wasn't I able to locate that piece of information in paragraph B? Yeah, Yvonne, it's not my, yo, so Yvonne, that's, okay, you said it's a mistake in the list of headings. Um, it's my mistake for ignoring the example, okay? Uh, and that's the danger of having that example is it's easier to ignore than the ones that you just 
uh, do on your own. So if I pay more uh, attention, then uh, it says, okay, uh, the answer here is 10, the difference between two phenomenon. That might not help me much, but if I go back to paragraph B, uh, mirages are optical illusions caused by atmospheric conditions which play tricks on the brain's visual system. So there's the sentence, right? And this is another uh, part where it tells you the cause of this, okay? Why? Because you have to know the cause of mirages and the cause of hallucinations to know the difference between the two. So it's a little bit trickier, okay? <laughs> yeah, Hung, you're right. I didn't listen to you, but that's because I wanted to also prove my point to use the transcripts, okay? So um, my goal here, I know some of you are clever and you figured this out and hats off to you, uh, but my ulterior motive, my secondary motive here was to show you the importance of using the transcripts for the reading in the back of the book. Okay, so if you get stuck, really stuck for a question like I just did and you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know what happened, look at the transcripts, figure out where you went wrong, okay, what happened, all right? Okay, uh, let's keep going. So that was my, uh, I'll make a note of that. So tip, okay, one, use the reading audio for your learning. Okay, two, use the reading transcripts for learning, especially when you are very confused by an answer. Okay, because that will help you in the official IELTS to go, okay, where might I be uh, doing this wrong and then you realize oh yeah I remember that time when I was doing this at home it was a different paragraph because it was actually in the example paragraph for the list of headings okay so that's the realization that I want you to uh, come to at this point okay uh, so uh, let's go to the next one uh, differences in air so we're on to 33 now students so this was atmospheric conditions. Uh, number 33, differences in air something are the cause of mirages. Yeah, my goal, Marwa, is for all of my students to get at least band 7 and hopefully for many of you to get 8. Amrit says temperatures. Uh, Alexander says temperature. Um, yeah. So temperature, temperatures, they will probably take both here. You can use plural for temperature. So uh, singular is more common, so I'm going to go with temperature. But temperature is good. If you're confident about that, don't skim or scan. Just stay with it, okay, uh, and move on to the next question. In the real exam, if I didn't know this one, I would answer these with confidence and then come back at the end and spend more time with that. Okay, uh, the pool of water seen in the distance is a something of the sky. So number 34, the pool of water seen in the distance is a something of the sky. Now, if you understand that, uh, you can probably get the right answer. Alexander says it's the reflection of the sky. Yes, that's right, because the road uh, behaves like a mirror with the heat coming off of it. So reflection, very good, Kesey, very good, Yvonne, absolutely. Number 35, we interpret the mirage as water and not a mirror because the mind makes a something from its past experiences. So number 35, what is it? It's not an illusion, so it makes an, uh, notice this here, when it's A-N, that means that this is going to start with a vowel, so A-E-I-O-U, okay, it's not a consonant, that's just a little tip or a little quick trick that you, have, you can pay attention to. If the article 
So if the article is an, not a, before the space, you definitely know that it's a, it's a vowel. It's not illusion. It's not interpretation. I'll give you a little bit of help. Um, it's another way to say educated guess. What is one word which means educated guess? It's a very good word to know for university. It's a good piece of vocabulary. That's right, Rahul. Very good. Good for you, Rahul. Yeah, it's a very useful word. Inference. Know this word. It's a very useful word. Uh, if you have a situation in business, for example, uh, with your clients, uh, don't say, I guess, but say, I infer. This means that you're using knowledge and experience. Okay? That's right, Kesey. Inference. Good. So inference. And notice, of course, that it is an I. It's a vowel sound because of the an. Okay? All right, members, um, that's all the time I have for today. I just realized, actually, that I'm a little bit over time, uh, and I have to prep for the next session, which will be a task two. So I'm going to stop there. Um, the last questions you can do on your own. You have them in your books, okay? If you don't have access to the books, uh, send me uh, an email, and I'll give you access. Alexander, I'll respond and give you access. This is test number Five. Again, for all of our viewers, in about 25 minutes, uh, I will be starting our next class, which will be writing task two. Uh, members, viewers, I really hope that you gain some valuable knowledge from this class about how to solve list of headings questions, and even more importantly, how to use our materials, the audio for the reading, and the transcripts to enhance your learning. Use the audio, use the transcripts, enhance your learning. The audio helps your listening skills as well as your reading skills, okay? You're very welcome, Rahul. Uh, everybody watching, you can get our courses for a 20% discount. Uh, just use the code LIVE20, L-I-V-E 20, at aehelp.com or G-I-E-L-T-S help.com on our websites. This is our academic uh, website here with this blue background okay click that red button to join it and uh, if you are learning for the general exam uh, green background click that red button to join there you're very welcome hung you're very welcome Amrit uh, great job uh, members hopefully you will be in the next class with me as well for an original task two uh, question much love to all of you. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Uh, and uh, again, hopefully I'll see you uh, shortly. Bye for now.